Making the Grade is sponsored by a grant from Monsignor Craig Harrison and St. Francis of Assisi Parish in Bakersfield. Hello, I'm Lisa Hendy and welcome to Making the Grade where we share good news and information about the great things happening in Catholic education here in the Diocese of Fresno and beyond. I'd like to welcome my two co-hosts for this episode, Kim Cochran and Russell Ray Pond, and let you know that this month we'll be continuing our conversation about student leadership and forming student leaders um, in our own diocese and we have a very special guest to talk about this but before we jump to her i thought it'd be really fun for the three of us to reminisce a little bit about some of those teachers and administrators that mm -hmm. we had in high school the ones that we remember now um, for the positive way they impacted on our lives so russell is there a coach or a teacher somebody that was important to you in high absolutely school years? um i remember when i was a freshman uh playing basketball the freshman basketball season was only about nine games. So we were only played up until maybe the beginning of December and then our season was done. Mm -hmm. uh, but luckily our head coach, Walt McCarthy, for the varsity team, he allowed me to be the student manager. So I would get to go uh, to early morning practices, set up uh, the gym, you know, back at Memorial, uh, must have been over 20 years ago. They had the chain, uh, they had the baskets that were uh, lifted up by the chain, by chains, chain links. So. <laughs> That would be my job, right? But you know, for is me, that over there in Ryan Gym? That's still <laughs> yeah, we were using Ryan Gym, uh, but uh, you know, even back then, uh, Coach McCarthy allowed me to be a part of something that was bigger than you know what I had experienced before, and I got mm -hmm. a chance to uh, you know to have a, a uh, some responsibility with the team, mm -hmm. be a part of what they were doing, and that year, uh, Valley basketball was pretty big. There was a lot of good players, and our team did pretty well. Um, and I got a chance to experience that as a freshman, and that you know that inspired me throughout my you know my high school days to continue to want to be a part of you know something bigger. So you know I credit uh, you know Coach McCarthy and Coach Esquivel, who were my, uh, the coaches there at the time, with uh, uh, with that bit of inspiration. And now it's led all the way to your own nonprofit organization dealing with basketball. Yes, and you know my passion for coaching leads directly back to my experiences with them. You know mm -hmm. they they were uh, fair with with uh, mm -hmm. with players. Um, you know, they were people of character, and uh, you know, you could tell that they they cared about more than just winning mm -hmm. in the game. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, I think that's probably the most important part of being a leader is being able to be sincere. People can see through uh, all the things that you're doing uh, to the heart of who you are. And if you can, if through your actions you're showing and demonstrating that you're a person of character, people will follow you. So by far, you know, um, even it's at that little time of my life where I was with you know, those two coaches, they you know, had a big, pretty big impact. How about you, Kim? Anybody that you remember that stands out as far as teachers? Well, you know, I grew up in Santa Maria, California, and I went to Santa Maria High School for two years and then, in, and then graduated from Rigetti High School, and so public school. And I remember um, Coach Moore, and he was my science teacher, but as most male coaches on campuses are, are he was a coach and a teacher as well. And um, I remember that I was his TA. I had him, I think, for one period actually for science, but then I was his, t his teacher's assistant mm -hmm. for another time. And I remember just getting to grade papers and you know I love that right yeah. I knew I was well, I knew I was gonna headed to be a teacher anyway right so I wanted to grade papers um, it's a task you know not all teachers are, right? <laughs> and um, so I just remember I got to go to the office and run errands for him and and looking back now I think that was really some really good leadership skills uh -huh. because I had to talk to people that I wouldn't normally have spoken to um, and I had to make some quick decisions sometimes for him and um, and so that was a good good time. I remember that. Mine was completely non-academic, and we heard about my illustrious flag girl career in That's the right. last episode That's of Making right. the Grade. So, you know, the the teacher who really impacted me was my flag coach, Miss Hamilton. Mm -hmm. And um, amazingly, we've gone on to be very good friends. At the time, I mm -hmm. thought she was you know, 30 or 40 years older than I am, and it turns out she was only five <laughs> years older than us in high school. But we're good friends now, and actually That's last great. summer I had the experience of I was speaking at a retreat for women up in um, Portland, and she came, and Aww. she was in the in the group that I was speaking to, and so I was able to publicly thank her for oh my goodness. The, exactly for the tremendous impact, and I remember at the time thinking, wow, she's really strict, she's really 
hard, she expects a lot of us. And when you're in high school, you may not appreciate that much. Right. But those skills that she ingrained within me mm -hmm. and the standards that she set for me um, of really expecting the best of myself, I think, right. have carried on to adulthood. So I just, I thank her still to this day for the, the place that she set. And Kim, we've got a great administrator here with us who I bet some kids will be answering this question that way. Can you introduce <laughs> our special guest? Well, I'm really happy to introduce Lu Luann Durrett, and um, she is the Director of Marketing and Communications um, and Alumni Relations at Garces mm -hmm. Memorial High School. So welcome. Well, for, thank you for having um, me. I'm glad you're here today. And you have, I have your bio in front of me, and I'm tired just reading it. You do <laughs> a lot on campus. Luann helps with administration, um, admissions, and um, you help with the Garces website as mm -hmm. well, right? Yeah. And um, you didn't go to Garces, you went to Highland, mm -hmm. is it Highland High School, right yes. in Bakersfield? Go Scots. Uh -huh. Okay, great. And you, then you went on to Cal Poly in San Luis. Yes. Your, but you did have a parent, your mother graduated. 1953 Garces Ram. Uh -huh. Alumni from Garces, that's great. I bet she's proud. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> she's happy that you're there now. And you're also um, the executive, you were the executive director before coming to Garces of an international nonprofit. Non mm -hmm. Great. And so you have lots of experiences you've brought with you to Garces and mm -hmm. to help you with the many jobs that you have, which include um, the CLC, the Christian Life Community. I have a Christian Life Community group of girls. Okay. Yes. And all girls. All girls. All and girls. we make blankets for the homeless. and. We go and cook breakfast, and it's a wonderful experience for them to actually go and cook the breakfast and serve it and hand out the blankets, and it helps to teach them compassion and knowing that everyone, you know, out there just needs a smile and a friendly face and not to be fearful of people that are different, but to be more compassionate and understanding wow. that there, but by the grace of God, go I. Yeah, you, you bet. Know. And so another one of your many jobs is you moderate, um, and let's see, you've been on the WASC team. Mm -hmm. You just ha you had accreditation, accreditation, so your WASC leadership team. And you're a moderator for the alumni board. Yes. Okay. That takes up a lot of time, I'm sure. Oh, they're a fun group. Probably pretty I really rewarding enjoy them. To, mm -hmm. to have them come back and, and see what else, see what's they're going on. They're a wonderful at, group, yes. At Garces mm -hmm. in, the, in the time they've been there. And along with uh, Micah Peck and Debbie Sarkowski, mm -hmm. um, you organize the annual Hall of Fame banquet dinner? I work with them on the student symposium. Okay. The Hall of Fame dinner I work on with the alumni board. Okay, so oh, great. Busy. Yeah. Busy. Good busy. Lots to do. Lots to do on campus. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you for joining us here today as we talk about our uh, topic of student leadership and leadership on campus at, at high school. Well, thank so, you. So, Leanne, I, I mean, I think one of the obvious questions when we're here in a program discussing Catholic education is what prompted um, your career to take you into a Catholic school and how, how has that been for you working in a Catholic school environment? You know, I get so much more out of it than I ever thought I would. It's, I have, I tell people I have the best job on campus. I really do. I get to work with the alumni, with the students, with the great administrative team. Mm -hmm. And I get to spread the word of Garces and all the great things going on in our campus. And I get to highlight the students' accomplishments, academic, mm -hmm. their athletic accomplishments, and just what they do out in the community. I couldn't be in a better place. And I get to grow in my faith along with them and watch them grow in their faith. And, you know, um, our school principal always says, you know, God has a plan. And sometimes we don't know what it is. And mm -hmm. I think this was just God's plan. This is yeah. where I'm supposed to be. That so I feel very lucky. Mm -hmm. It's us tuning in to hear it sometimes. That's a challenge yes. in life. Yes, that little voice. <laughs> mm -hmm. Right. Um, you know, one of the functions of a good student government um, and is to build campus community. And student government is just one of the many things, that you, one of the groups that you work with. And um, we talked to our students in the la last episode about community and how, as student leaders, they work to build community. How, as a moderator and an adult on, in a Catholic school environment campus, do you feel you build community? Well, you know, Garces is really, until you're there, you don't really understand the sense of community. But what you see is all the kids know each other, everybody says hello, everybody's really friendly, and we just try to emphasize to the kids to be kind to others. Mm -hmm. You know, and if you see someone having lunch alone by themselves, go and sit with them. And a few years ago, we put together a little program that nobody really knew about where kids signed up, and they agreed if they saw a student sitting by themselves, they would go and have lunch with them, or they would befriend them. 
And this was the ASB leadership class that put that in place with Micah Peck. And it was kind of a quiet thing on campus that no one really knew they were doing. And it's just kind of taken effect. And so you don't see kids by themselves on campus. Mm -hmm. And so it's really about, you know, leadership comes in so many forms. Right. And it, I think the girls spoke earlier about res having respect and people to look up to. They probably don't realize it yet, but there's going to be so many students next year, they're going to look up to them because right. they're going to be so friendly. A smile goes a long way, especially when you're a freshman on campus and you right. don't know anyone. So, um, so we really try to talk to the kids about being kind and reaching out to everybody on campus. It's not about being a member of the popular group. It's about reaching out to everybody. And at Garces, we try to have a place for everybody. So they can be leaders whether they are in tall girls, the flags, we've got a wonderful flag group at our school, or if they're in drama, or if they're part of the ASB team, or a sports mm -hmm. team, or, you know, it's building leadership wherever you go. Sure, so. sure. Well, it sounds like there's, all, you know, there's so many uh, beneficial things that come with uh, being a part of uh, a Catholic school, uh, you know, culture and community. Uh, what are some of the challenges of working in a Catholic high school? What things um, tend to, uh, uh, Teenagers. Teenagers. <laughs> <laughs> One word. Just being Whether teenagers. Like or not, right? <laughs> and you have to, especially with our leadership group, we tell them all the time that they're the kids everyone else looks up to. So when they, they are the role model, and they sometimes get frustrated, but it's true, with a lot comes a lot. And so a lot is expected of them. And so we tell everyone's going to be all eyes on them. And so how they behave will go the rest of the school. And it's funny about kids, they will rise up to your expectation. Correct. Sure. Correct. So if you tell them this is what I expect from you, and it's kind of like what you said about the teacher that you think so much of now. She expected a lot of you, so you gave a lot in return. Mm -hmm. And I think the more that we expect of kids and the more we ask of them and the more respect we show them, the more you get back from them. I get frustrated sometimes when we lump the kids together because they happen to be a student who plays football. It's mm -hmm. not who they are. Right. So if you can learn to treat the kids individually and expect a lot from them, you'll be surprised, I think, sometimes of what you get back from them. So I, I can't say enough about the, our kids on campus. They yeah. really do rise to that level of expectation. You know, just to piggyback on that question a little bit and to hone in on, you know, we're, we're, we're really looking at the difference um, between Catholic education um, and public schools. And Luann, you and I have the chance to sit on a marketing committee together. So um, after the break, I'm going to ask you to chime in a little bit on that issue of how we do what we do with the, within the finances that we have. Okay. Um, so ponder that as we move on to our break here on Making the Grade. And we'll be with you right after this brief pause. KNXC thanks all its loyal viewers and respected businesses who have supported your Catholic television station. Now you can support KNXT with program underwriting by having your name, your company's name, or organization associated with your favorite program. Detailed information about you or your company will appear before and after each program or day part you select. Keep the quality and spiritual message alive and make a difference. Call 559-488-7440 today or go online at knxt.tv to find out more about program underwriting on KNXT. Hello and welcome back to another episode of Making the Grade where we're discussing with our special guest Luann Durrett from uh, Garces High School in Bakersfield, California, the topic of forming student leaders and Luann, I thought it would be really fun as we as we move forward for the program to see some of the great work that's being done at Garces and you were so uh, helpful in providing for us some photos of some of the things that are happening on the Garces campus. So we're going to take a look at those for just a few moments and have you walk us through in just a, a sentence or two about each of the activities, um, some of the great leadership activities that are having happening on the Garces campus. So let's, let's just take a look at our very first photo and uh, that'll be coming in just a moment as we get ready for those photos and here's the first one uh, that tell us a little bit about this that's a picture of uh, the CLC group that Mrs. Bears and I work with that was on one of our dress-up days on campus during spring fling week I think so that was our picture for the yearbook oh this is the girls soccer team 
They won the Valley Championship this past year. They worked really hard. They started 0-6. Oh so for goodness. them to win the Valley Championship, we're very proud That's of them. That's quite a comeback. Yay. Yes, it was. They never gave up. That's great. It was a lot of fun. Oh, these are our new iPads. We're so excited. Garces is moving forward. We are rolling out a one-to-one -one learning program, and every student, every faculty member will be given an iPad. So it's really, really going to be leading edge. We're very excited to be the first ones in Kern County, in Bakersfield, to do that. Oh, this is our canned food drive. Every year, we, the students bring in cans of food to re-supplement the St. Vincent de Paul kitchen to help feed the needy in the community. And students go above and beyond bringing in canned food every year. They do it around Thanksgiving. Christmas on campus, we always have needy families in and the campus ministry group gets together and dresses elves and Santas. And they distribute toys to needy families that go to the Mercy Center during the day for the students and they invite their parents to come along with them on a Saturday. We hand out presents to them that the students donate. It's a lovely day. Now this is our cheering section known as the herd. That's them at a Valley basketball playoff game. We have a lot of school spirit. The kids are great. They really get behind and support each other. We're very, very lucky in that way. These are some of our kids that uh, we had a signing day and those are some of the students that uh, signed scholarships to go on uh, to other schools after college. It was a really fun day in our gymnasium. I'm very proud of all of them. I think we can look at that and we could probably replicate that with a hundred more similar oh, slides yeah. of activities on campus. Yeah. And it, it brings me back to the topic that I asked you to think about just right before the break, which is, um, you know, you and I sit on this diocesan marketing committee to really spread the good news about what's happening mm -hmm. in our Catholic schools. And we know that we operate in tremendous ways with very sometimes limited budgets. So, Yes. I know that um, in the position that you're in, you, were, you involve a lot of community support in spreading the good news about Garces. Just say a few minutes about how you work within the resources that you have. Well, we, we do have limited resources because every dollar we spend is a dollar we're not spending on the kids. So we try to do as many things as we can do at no cost. So we will do lots of email blasts, work through mm -hmm. the parishes send the kids out to talk after mass about great <laughs> things going on on campus. They're good ambassadors. They are wonderful ambassadors and I think if every parent could meet a Garces child they would want their child to be a Garces child as well. So the more we can put them out there in front the more people realize it is worth it. It's a sacrifice to go mm -hmm. to send your child sure. for a Catholic education and it's worth every penny mm -hmm. and I think more parents that see that and they see the kind of students that come out. I think a lot of them worry about, gee, I might not fit in, I've never done public school, or it's so expensive, or I don't know what my kid wants to do afterwards. Mm -hmm. I don't know if they're ready for college. It is the best foundation, the greatest gift they can give their child. Mm -hmm. And the more that we can get that word out, the more people will understand if to, it's the sacrifice that a family will never regret making. Mm -hmm. Yeah. At Garces, you know, once the kids get there, parents have made the decisions, they decisioned it to um, provide their children with a Catholic education, they get there and you're a college prep campus. Mm -hmm. And so from day one, you are preparing all of your students um, for college. Yes. And we talked to the girls last month and they told us how busy they were with sports and academics and all their extracurricular activities that they mm -hmm. do. And as an administrator on campus, and um, what do you do to help support students um, in their endeavors every day? How do you help them manage their time and, and be able to be successful? Well, a couple things. One, we are a college preparatory campus and we want to be. We want kids to have options. I mean, their senior year they may say, you know what, I'm just going to stay local and go to a community college. Or they may opt to join the military, but they have options that way. Mm -hmm. They may get an offer to go to a four-year university and they're going to be eligible to go. So we're really excited that we offer that opportunity for all our students. Sure. We have a collaboration period built in. We have seven classes, we have four periods a day. So every other day that extra period is collaboration. So it's built into their schedule and every teacher's in their classroom. So they learn to go to those teachers that they need help with, which is a skill that will help them all through life. Especially sure. in college, you'll be able to knock on that professor's door if you need a little right. extra guidance. So our kids get a lot of extra help and they, we help them to learn how to go and find answers and find what they need and help them grow in that way. For me personally, I try to be a friendly face on campus, somebody who listens and um, be there for the kids. I think all kids need an adult to look up to 
a safe place to go, sure. somebody fun to talk to once in a while. Mm -hmm. Leadership so. comes so naturally to some children and oh, some, right. even in high school, we need to continue to nourish them towards, like you said, asking questions of another adult and going and finding those answers that they need because that's mm -hmm. going to be a definite skill that they'll need in college. Mm -hmm. Sure. Yeah. Sounds like you're getting it done. Yeah, absolutely. I think you're doing a great job of um, fostering uh, leadership and accountability for your kids and being able to speak for themselves. How, uh, how else does uh, Garza able to focus uh, students on uh, following Jesus' ex example, uh, especially within you know, le self-leadership, leading themselves and leading others? Well, they take, they get four years of theology, so they learn a lot about the religion. And I think the fact that we pray together a lot as a school, mm -hmm. I think students learn to not only pray for themselves, they learn to pray for others. And I think that's important. And I think as a leader, when you can learn that your actions impact others and to pray for others is important. Thinking you know? outside of yourself. Yes, and having compassion for others is right. important. Those are the kind of people that others respect, people that will do for those less than them. Absolutely. So we spend a lot of time on that. So they get a lot of time in theology. Luann, if there are parents out there who are watching tonight's episode and maybe they're helping to prepare their students to be ready for high school, maybe even in the early years of elementary school, what's some advice that you would give to parents out there about readiness for high school, um, not, not necessarily financially, but maturity-wise and helping a student really to be academically ready for high school? You know, I, I think every kid's different. Some kids are ready to walk through the door and some kids you just shake their head at, but you know <laughs> they're going to grow up. Like I said, teenagers. But um, I think for parents just to love them, I think spend time with them, I think that's the greatest gift you can give a child and know your child and know what, where, this, where they'll excel and where they'll need help. And I think getting to know their counselor, coming on campus, that's the nice thing about Garces. Parents can come anytime. Mm -hmm. They can talk to the counselors. They can meet with their teachers. And I think the best advice is not so much getting the student ready. They'll get there, but for the parent, to get ready as well so they can help their child along the way because it is kind of it's a big transition to get into high right. school and I think knowing your kids knowing what they're doing helping them stay on top of their homework knowing their friends is very important. Did you hear that Russell? Did you write that, that. that stuff down? <laughs> I did. Pen. Get a pen. We can bust you because you're the only one who has uh, elementary school students. Kim and I have successfully survived high school. Ooh, that's yes. right. Yeah. <laughs> you know it's so natural for, for parents to at the elementary level to come in talk to the teachers but I'm sure it's a little you probably have to coach some parents along as well. Um, and Well sometimes at that age a parent doesn't want to you know, their child is mortified for, by everything than, you know, their parent does when they're a teenager. So right. it's a delicate balance, but you can always email a teacher, mm -hmm. and that's an easy way to have a conversation just to make sure your student's on the right track or come in for a conference. Sure. I think that's really helpful sure. so that you're on the that's same page because you want your child to have every opportunity available to them, you know, when they're and they teenagers. Need to know you're all working together. Yes. The schools working together with parents and Absolutely. Being an active participant, absolutely. Yeah. Yes. Well, one of the things that differentiates the Garces campus from um, other high schools in Bakersfield is the prayer life. And mm -hmm. um, we want to make sure that we close out every episode with prayer. We usually have a student, but our students are actually on summer vacation right now. And so we've <laughs> okay. rolled out a, a, a substitute prayer guardian for us this month. We picked the youngest person on our panel, the closest <laughs> oh, to a student, like to close us in prayer. Good so, job. Russell, will you lead us in prayer? Sure. Okay, in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, amen. Amen. Jesus, Good Shepherd, teach us through your Spirit to walk your way of light, to live your way of truth, and in all things to act with love and compassion. Help us to come to the Father by knowing you, loving you, and serving you in each other. May our schools be places of learning, of wonder, learning and peace, where the lessons of today prepare us for the challenges of tomorrow. May your mother Mary guide our footsteps as she guided yours. This prayer we make in faith. Amen. 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 In the name of Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. And Russell, yeah. while we're on you, let's go to our famous patented um, pick of the month segment here on okay. Making the Grade. We like to share um, tips and news and information about things that are helpful to your family out there as you're watching this. So what do you have for us this month, Russell? What's your pick? Well, you know, along with, I'll try to stay with the coaching theme. So this month, uh, I am uh, sharing the mentor leader. Uh, this is a book written by Tony Dungy, who was the former coach of the uh, Indianapolis Colts. 
uh, Super Bowl uh, champion uh, from several years ago. Uh, one of the great things about this book, um, he talks about building leaders, building relationships with, uh, with his team, uh, with his players, but he also speaks uh, to the aspect of faith and um, how much faith can inform your leadership style and um, how much uh, uh, being a person of faith can uh, engender respect uh, that your players and people who work with you uh, will, um, will grow to have because of um, the person and the character that you have. So it's a great book. I recommend it to anybody who is uh, uh, in a position where they can affect people's lives. Sounds great. What's yeah. the title of it again? The Mentor Leader. The Mentor Leader. Great. Yeah. Awesome. Kim, what's, what's your pick for this month? Well, my book, it, my pick is a children's book. Oh. Um, we know that if we are going to encourage leadership, it's going to begin at home, and it's going to begin with parents um, reading to their children, which I hope they're doing every day. And um, the author of this book, Sarah Thompson, has a series of a few books, Imagine a Day, Imagine a Night, and Imagine a Place. And, um, and so that's what we want to do is we want to read a book with our children and let them love learning and have them imagine what their lives could be as leaders and how they could affect and have an effect on um, the world around them. And just like you were talking about your kids being um, servants, of servant leaders at school, that's what we want for all of our children. And so this is a great place to start imagining what their lives could be. Awesome. Looks like I'm headed to the bookstore after today's <laughs> episode of Making the Grade. We grade. have these books at home, so they're <laughs> we great. We do. Yes. Oh, great. Well, my Glad pick, not surprisingly, is a website. We know that Lisa loves her websites, yes. and um, it's actually the collegeboard.org website. Luann will probably recognize this as the uh, the place that you go to sign up for the SATs, but there's mm -hmm. so much more than that at collegeboard.org, and this is actually a website that I recommend students sign up for the moment that they, they um, get ready to enroll in high school. Mm -hmm. You're, you absolutely need to be ready for that standardized testing, but there are great study tips and information about helping your child early on to look at colleges. So you can find all of this over at our uh, knxt.tv Facebook page, where we have more news and information about making the grade. And just in the moments that we have left, I do want to thank Luann Dorit for uh, being our guest today. How can uh, people find out more about Garces? You can go to our website, www.garces.org. Or Great. give us a call or come visit. Come visit anytime. And I know you guys have a Facebook community yes. as well as an active YouTube channel as well. Yes. So be sure to check that out. And again, right. we'll have links. And we invite you to join us next time for more news and information about the great things being done in Catholic education here on Making the Grade. Making the Grade is sponsored by a grant from Monsignor Craig Harrison and St. Francis of Assisi Parish in Bakersfield. Thank you.